Good morning. My name is Gretchen Galbraith, and I am the Dean of the Faculty and Vice President for Academic Affairs. I am so honored to welcome you to the 117th Commencement Exercises of St. Michael's College. Dr. Richard Plum presiding. Please remain standing as you are able while Mia Cooper, Class of 2024, leads us in the singing of our national anthem. This will be followed by the invocation led by Reverend Brian Cummings, Society of St. Edmund, Director of Edmundite Campus Ministry. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the Parts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets echo, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say. As we gather for these 2024 commencement exercises, let us remember in our prayers two individuals who recently passed away who had a great impact on St. Michael's College. Dr. Paul J. Rice, who served as our 14th president from 1985 to 1996, died on February 29th. And Michael David Samara, who served as our Vice President of Student Affairs, Dean of Students, and as a campus minister, serving a total of 40 years at the college, passed away on April 26th. As we remember these colleagues and good friends in our prayer this morning, we give thanks to God for their ex exemplary lives and service to our college. Thank you for remembering them as we gather. During last evening's baccalaureate mass, we heard proclaimed from the first letter of John these words, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you create us out of love, to be loved and to love one another. We ask that you continue to, to bestow your spirit of love upon the graduates of the class of 2024 so that they may spread your love in the world. Protect them in their future endeavors and grant them happiness in the years to come. Bless our commencement exercises and bless the families and friends of our graduates who gather with us to celebrate this day. We especially ask your blessings upon all mothers present with us that they may see your love shine on their children, and for all our deceased mothers, that they may have eternal rest. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated.
President Plum, members of the St. Michael's College Board of Trustees, members of the Society of St. Edmund, parents, relatives, friends, alumni, distinguished guests, and most importantly, members of the class of 2024, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you today. On this Mother's Day, I also want to give a special welcome to all who have had the privilege of serving in a maternal role at some point in the lives of our graduates. We honor those mothers who are present and those in our memories. I'd like to present to you the members of the Dais Party. Would you each stand as you are able as I introduce you and then be seated? Please hold your applause until the end of the introductions. Starting on my right, Dr. Richard Plum, President of the College. Heidi St. Peter, Director of Purposeful Learning. Timothy Mackin, Associate Dean of the College. Father Brian Cummings, Director of Edmundite Campus Ministry. Marnie Owen, Registrar and Assistant Dean of Academic Affairs. And on my left, Dr. Ansel Augustine, who I will introduce at greater length in a few minutes. William Karstens, Professor of Physics. Patrick Fitzgibbons, President of the Alumni Association Board of Directors. Patricia Casey, Chair of the Board of Trustees. And Reverend David Theroux, Religious Studies, Professor of Religious Studies. At this point, I would like to make a few announcements. In the event of a fire alarm or other building emergency requiring evacuation, remain calm. Um, exit through the closed doors marked with the red exit sign. Once outside, move away from the building. Please take a moment and note the door nearest your seat. So pretend we're in an airplane, look around, find, find your exit. Should you need medical attention or immediate assistance, please speak to the nearest public safety officer or visit the information desk loaded in, um, located in the Tarrant lobby. Restrooms are located off the lobby. If you need to leave during the ceremony, it would be great if you could go out the doors in the back. To ensure the best possible experience for our graduates and guests, please keep aisles clear at all times and remain in your seats until the end of the ceremony. The full program for today's events can be found online either by scanning the QR code or visiting the website located on your printed handout. Please take a moment now to silence your cell phones if you haven't already. Thank you. Today's ceremony is dedicated to faculty who have held important roles at the college and who are retiring with the status of emeritus faculty this year. Mahmoud Arani, Professor of Applied Linguistics. William Karstens, Professor of Physics. Robert Litovsky, Professor of Business Administration and Accounting. Carolyn Lukens Olson, Professor of Classical and Modern Languages and Literature. In addition, this ceremony is held in memory of faculty members who have passed away in the past year. Carolyn Duffy, Professor of Applied Linguistics. Frank Nicosia, Professor of History. Paul J. Rice, past president of the college. Now, it is my honor to present to you Dr. Richard Plum, 18th president of St. Michael's College. Good morning. Welcome class of 2024. Congratulations on this great and joyful day. There are several groups I would like to acknowledge who made this day possible. First, the families of our graduates. We are honored and humbled that you've entrusted the education of your students with us. To friends of our graduates who've supported and challenged them throughout the years. To our board of trustees who guide the institution in fulfilling its mission to members of the Emmadite community who've instilled a soul in our beloved institution and without whom there would be no St. Michael's. To our faculty and staff who have taught, mentored, and guided our graduates this momentous day. Thank you all. Thank you for being part of this day. Now there's one more group that I would like to give a special call out to. Could all mothers, if possible, please stand. Thank you for sharing your special day with us today. This is one of the best days of the academic year. Today we celebrate the achievement of our graduates. I feel privileged to be among the first to congratulate you on your accomplishments. And this was no small feat. You are a resilient class. Many of you came to St. Mike's when our country was struck with a global pandemic. 
Amid great uncertainty around the world, you completed your college search and chose St. Mike's for your education. You didn't let the pandemic prevent you from trying new experiences, absorbing new ideas, pushing and challenging yourself, making what will be lifelong friends, and becoming a leader. All of these things are essential in shaping who you are. There's a question that you will continue to explore throughout your life. Who am I? Some of you may have heard me pose this question before, and it bears repeating today. It is one of two deep, essential questions to life that you will lead beyond St. Mike's. Who am I and whose am I? These questions go to the very core of your being, your values, your responsibilities, and will guide you throughout your relationships, your career, and your life. During your time at St. Mike's, you've explored these questions through coursework, through service to others, through your faith, through athletics, through fire and rescue, through adventure sports, clubs, and other activities that you've engaged in, and through the multitude of learning experiences you've engaged in. Even though I've been your president for only one semester, I've learned much about you as a class. You are kind. It is one of the first things I felt when I walked onto campus, and I feel every time I meet with one of you. The ways in which you care about each other permeates throughout our campus and into the community beyond. You check in on one another. You hold doors open for each other. You step up to help someone if they're struggling. You support one another in good times and in bad. This kindness is returned by your classmates, by your professors who have guided you throughout your academic journey, by our staff and mentors who have supported you and challenged you in your victories. You are a resilient group. Heck, you went to college during a global pandemic. If you can face that and succeed here, you can face most things that life throws at you. You are critical thinkers. St. Mike's has provided you with a space to examine your own thoughts and beliefs from many different angles. Our courses in history, philosophy, and English have caused you to think more deeply, consider context, and understand opposing views. Our centers have allowed you to see things through environmental, global, and social justice lenses. You are leaders. Leadership comes in many forms. You may not always be in the front of the pack, but you know how to lead from within. Our world needs leaders today in all spaces, and there is no one better suited to take the lead than a St. Mike's grad. You seek to change the world. You are prepared to face and navigate the complexities of the modern world with skill, professionalism, and empathy. From your knowledge and understanding of global issues, your concerns for the environment, your dedication to service and justice, you are ready to go out into the world and to make your mark. I am confident whatever you choose to do, wherever you decide to go, you will make a positive impact on our community and around. So that's just a short list of what I've seen in you. Now comes a harder question. Whose are you? This is a question that only you can answer. Your education here has given you the tools to seek and explore your own answers, and this will be a question that you continue to explore throughout your life. Here are some thoughts that might help you along that quest. What gives you purpose? What fulfills you? What motivates you? What are you responsible to do? Oh, and I forgot one thing that falls under the who am I category. You are purple knights, and in a few short moments, you will join 23,000 other alum of this remarkable institution. Congratulations, class of 2024, and best of luck. Thank you, President Plum. 
Next, I'm going to present two awards to two outstanding um, undergraduates. The Catherine Fairbanks Memorial Award and the Father Preville Memorial Award are given to students in the graduating class who demonstrate commitment and achievement related to the intellectual, spiritual, moral, and social values of St. Michael's College. The two awardees I am about to present are outstanding representatives of St. Michael's. President Plum, I am pleased to present to you the Class of 2024 recipient of the Father Preville Memorial Award, Swapnil Jajidia. And Swapno, Swapno, feel safe. Swapno is from India. During his undergraduate studies, Swapno pursued a double major in psychology and statistics, complemented by double minors in anthropology and mathematics. His dedication to academic excellence earned him consistent placement on the Dean's List, a certificate of achievement in calculus, and membership in the honors program. His commitment to service and leadership was evident through his involvement as a core team member of the mobilization of volunteer efforts called MOVE and as a campus tour guide. Additionally, his spirit led him to a seam with leadership role in training at the Adventure Sports Center. Swapnil's academic journey extended to a semester abroad in Samoa where he studied social and environmental change in Oceania. He further demonstrated his commitment to global impact through a Freeman Foundation internship in Vietnam, focusing on bridging the gap in special education interventions. Inspired by his mentorship under Professor Sarah Nozick, Swapnil is currently researching the stigmatization and discrimination faced by college-age students after contracting COVID-19. Looking ahead, his academic journey continues at the University of Hawaii, supported by a scholarship through the East-West Center's Graduate Degree Fellowship. It is clear from his record of accomplishments that Swapnil possesses three valuable virtues of authenticity, integrity, and empathy that will allow him to thrive in his educational and career-related endeavors. Swapnil, we are glad to honor you with the 2024 Father Preville Memorial Award. Next, President Plum, I am pleased to present to you the Class of 2024 recipient of the Catherine Fairbanks Memorial Award, Jenna Lynn Farber. Jenna, please come to the stage. Jenna is from Rhode Island and is a psychology major with a minor in business administration. Observant and curious about the world around her, she makes connections among her experiences, is thoughtful, intentional, and courageous in her involvement and self-expression. She is someone who is engaged in the world, shows up fully in everything she does, and explores interests and experiences in all opportunities. Jenna has been involved in a spectrum of campus activities, including Common Ground, Fix It With Five, Founder Society, Honors Program, MOVE, Random Act of Kindness, and the St. Michael's Campus Radio Station, and the Feminist Club. These all showcase her commitment to personal, academic, and community growth. Jenna assumed campus leadership roles as a wellness ambassador, purposeful learning peer mentor, and campus tour guide. These roles further demonstrate her commitment to fostering a welcoming and supportive environment for her fellow students. Her scholarly pursuits extend to her position as a research assistant, the results of which she just presented at the Eastern Psychological Association in Boston earlier this year. Looking ahead, Jenna will be pursuing her Master of Science in Clinical Mental Health Counseling at Johnson & Wales University in Rhode Island. Jenna, we honor you with the 2024 Catherine Fairbanks Memorial Award. In addition to the Preville and Fairbanks Award, St. Michael's has a number of ways in which we honor high academic achievement. 
One of these honorary distinctions is through involvement in our own honors program. Another is induction into one of the college-wide or disciplinary honor societies with chapters on our campus. A number of our seniors have completed all the requirements of the St. Michael's College Honors Program. Dozens have been inducted into the various national honor societies. You can review the names of these outstanding students in the commencement program. I'd like to ask all students who completed the honors program or were inducted into a national honor society to please rise as you are able. Congratulations to all of you and to your families and the faculty who've supported and guided you in your academic pursuits. Another mark of distinction is Latin honors based on grade point average, cum laude at 3.5, magna cum laude at 3.7, summa cum laude at 3.9 or higher. These honors are also noted in your program. Among the summa cum laude students, we have 10 with GPAs of 4.0 in their St. Michael's courses. Students, I will uh, please stand as you are able as I call your name if you are one of the 10. And I ask you to hold your applause until I have named all 10. Petra Maria Bayuk, William Forrest Coburn, Catherine Grace Culleton, Jenna Lynn Farber, Swapnil Jadidia, Valerie Ann Johnston, Virginia Rice Kelsey, Finn James Keating McGilvery, Sarah Michelle Newton, Allison Blake Petruzzo. Now you may clap. Congratulations on a remarkable achievement. At the end of today's ceremony, I ask these 10 students who've earned the 4-0 to assemble at the steps at the bottom of the stage to lead the recessional out of the building along with President Plum. It's customary at commencement to have student speakers selected to provide reflections for their peers. Today we have representatives from both graduate and undergraduate programs. First, it is my pleasure to in introduce Henry Haddad. Henry, would you please come to the podium? Henry's from Connecticut and earned his bachelor's degree from St. Michael's College with majors in elementary education and history in 2023. He entered our MAT program after graduation to pursue his master's degree and an additional endorsement in special education. He looks forward to traveling as much as possible in the next few years, perhaps teaching abroad, before settling down to teach elementary school. Wow. Good morning. I'm so honored to be standing before you, um, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the graduate programs. Before I really get started, I want to take a moment to wish all mothers, those here and those who are not able to be with us today, a happy Mother's Day. And to my mom in particular, thank you. I would never have reached this stage, let alone be speaking on it without your love and your support. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Henry, and I have spent the last five years as both an undergraduate and a graduate student here at St. Mike's. I'm so thankful for this opportunity, not only because it is an immense privilege to be able to speak to you all at graduation, but because, in the, because the process of writing this speech gave me the chance to really reflect on my time at this wonderful school in a way that I had not taken the opportunity to do before. As I thought back on my time here, I recognized how fortunate I am to have worked with so many amazing and knowledgeable professors, to have found a career path that I'm excited and passionate about, and most importantly, to have built so many amazing friendships that I know will last a lifetime with the people who make this community so incredible. I appreciate you all more than you know. As we gather here today to celebrate our achievement, I'd like to do two things. To both look back on what has made my time here so memorable and offer a few words about how we all might move forward following our departure from campus. One of the most rewarding things that I did while I was racking my brain about what to say today was to take a minute and think back on some of the most joyful moments from my time here. 
Not necessarily when I was having the most fun, but when I felt truly happy and fulfilled. So if y'all would humor me, I'll invite you to close your eyes and take 15 seconds to think of an instance, I'm sure you have many, during which you were truly joyful from your time here. Thank you. I know it can feel a little silly, but on a day like today that moves so fast and is so full of goodbyes and teary moments, I think it is important to pause, step back, and remember truly why we all love this place enough to stick it out. As I was thinking back on some of my favorite and most joyful moments of the last five years, I, something I realized is that so many of them came in little moments. Recently, it was my best friend putting me on to his favorite music during our four-hour drive back home. Um, or sitting around the table and enjoying dinner with my roommates. I suspect that the people who are part of these moments don't even remember them happening, but to me they were so significant. And it struck me. There is a real power in these everyday moments to totally alter someone's day or their week or their life. The idea of finding joy in small moments calls back an analogy my dad used to tell me and my siblings all the time when we were growing up that I think perfectly encapsulates the spirit of this community. He told us that if you were to light a candle in an open field in the middle of the day, you wouldn't be able to see its light for very far at all. But if you took that same candle and placed it in the middle of a dark stadium, you'd be able to see its glow from every seat. You never know how dark the world is for people, and the same small act of kindness that might not seem like a big deal to you could light up someone's entire life. It really is the little things that can make a massive impact on our lives, from asking someone sitting alone in Alio to come eat with you to calling your friend that you haven't talked to in way too long. Every choice we make can have a seismic impact on the people around us. I know that in the times I have felt the most alone and the most hopeless, it has been the small moments of kindness from those around me, from the people here, who have helped me to continue to move forward. And now, to look forward to the bittersweet departure that's on the horizon. As you go off into the world, I want to share a quote with you that has a special place in my heart. I think this quote from Irish author George Bernard Shaw puts words to the ideas that this college embodies in a really powerful way. Shaw wrote, this is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown out on the scrap heap, the being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances complaining that the world does not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. It is a sort of splendid torch which I have got hold of for a moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. It doesn't require a lot of imagination when looking around at the world to realize that it needs more people who are willing to live with a purpose that is greater than themselves. And if St. Mike's has taught me anything, it is that when you surround yourself with a community of people willing to support and love each other, finding that purpose becomes, if not a simple, then a much less daunting task. So as we leave this building today, I urge you all to be present to the simple everyday moments. Be mindful of all the little things you can do to shine your light to make this world a brighter place. And go out into the world that waits for us and find your joy by living with purpose. Before I leave the stage, I have one more thing to say. As a Palestinian American, I would be upset with myself if I was given this platform and didn't take the opportunity to bring to your attention the fact that there are over 14,000 Palestinian children whose lives have been taken and will never attend another day of school. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinian children will never be able to realize their dreams of graduating from college like us due to the intentional destruction of the education infrastructure in Gaza. Palestinians are people. Just like you and I, they have hopes, and they have dreams, and they have goals. So as an act of gratitude for this privilege of graduating, I encourage all of you to stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Thank you.
Thank you, Henry. Each year, the senior class selects a colleague whom they respect and admire and from whom they want to hear some final words. To speak this morning, the class of 2024 has selected Michaela Blake. Michaela, would you please come to the podium? Michaela is from New York and is a psychology major with a criminology minor, a varsity basketball player. She also assumed pivotal roles in campus organizations such as MOVE and the Student Association. Michaela has served as president of the class of 2024 and vice president of the Residence Hall Association. A peer note taker, co-leader of Best Buddies and service trip leader, Michaela's commitment to both her studies and fostering community connections extend throughout campus. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and happy Mother's Day, Mom. And to all the other moms, aunts, grandmothers, and maternal figures here today, thank you for sharing your day with us. I would like to first recognize that for the class of 2024, high school class of 2020, this is our first in-person, no mask, normal graduation, well overdue. <laughs> Before I talk about our amazing class, some thank yous are in order. I'd like to take this time to thank our friends and family who have shown endless support and love to get us here today, and also to the loved ones who could not be with us today. Thank you to the professors who got us through in-person, online, and hybrid classes. Also, thank you for the online finals. That was actually really cool, and you should bring that back. <laughs> thank you to our advisors who helped guide us to be in these cap and gowns. Thank you to Campus Ministry, the MOVE Department, Public Safety, Maintenance Staff, Alia Workers, and many other departments that too often go unrecognized for their commitment to make our experience here one to remember. When I was asked to speak here today, without hesitation, I accepted. But like most of my assignments, I procrastinated very badly. Not because I wasn't truly honored and excited to do this, but because how does one wrap up their last four years in five minutes? I still don't have the answer to this because this most definitely will be longer than five minutes. Class of 2024, we have accomplished many things. We have overcome barriers and obstacles that others did not have to face. Entering college as a first year can be extremely difficult. Entering college as a first year in the middle of a global t pandemic, slightly more difficult. It is impossible to reflect on our college years without mentioning the pandemic, so I will do so briefly. To say not being able to meet new people, not having new in-person classes, and constantly keeping up with a new set of weekly rules was demanding for us in our first year is an understatement. I could go on for hours about all the things COVID took away from us, from our senior year in high school to our sophomore year in college. But like most of you, I'm sick of talking about that. The pandemic did not define this class. When you reflect back on those times, I encourage you to acknowledge all the hardships you overcame. I'd like you to think of how, I'd like you to highlight how resilient, flexible, intelligent, and strong we all are because of it. When I think of my time here at St. Mike's, it's the little things that we have all become accustomed to that stand out. It's the not blinking an eye to donate a dollar to a club asking for donations to a local cause outside of Alio. It's awkwardly fast walking to the door, someone's holding 15, ahead of you, 15 feet ahead of you. It's the professors texting me why I didn't make it to class or to come talk to them about an assignment. And Coach Shannon, that never happened to me personally. I had perfect attendance. <clears throat> it's waiting five minutes to get into Alio because Rosemary or Anne are holding up the line, catching up with some students during rush hour. It's the swim team running out during the men's NE10 basketball championship in very small swimsuits to prevent the other team from making a foul shot. All these little things that we may take for granted are what makes St. Mike's so special. I challenge and encourage you to bring these aspects of SMC out into the world with you. Maybe not that last one, but all the other ones are good. To the future teachers, writers, athletes, scientists, and leaders, you will forever hold a special piece of St. Mike's with you. Share this with your new communities. Everyone out there needs a little bit more SMC in their life. Share this with them. Know that our experience at SMC was truly a unique one. From racing around in the threes on someone's back for Derby Day, 
riding a bull on P-Day, to creating a small business just because you felt like it. You don't get these experiences anywhere else. You don't get the support from campus counselors and professors like you do here. Know that the relationships that you have made with your professors do not end today. My sister Marissa, class of 2020, still has professors reaching out to her, checking in, and congratulating her on her accomplishments, some she hasn't seen since her freshman year nearly eight years ago. This is unique to St. Mike's. Our small liberal arts school here in Colchester, Vermont, provides us with a platform to generate change, create new clubs, and form special relationships. This is special to only us. While our experience comes to a close today, the memories we have made will last a lifetime. From late night runs to Stein's freshman year, to sitting outside our townhouses this past week, trying to soak up as much time together as we had left. This we keep with us. As you say goodbye to St. Mike's, your teammates, your roommates, your friends, remember this day is also to commend you all for all of your accomplishments, validate your hard work, and commemorate the joyful times we have shared here. As we take our final steps across this stage and say goodbye to our home away from home, know that we are ready. We are ready to take on new challenges, new communities, new classrooms, and new friends. Know that the endless hours of honing our skills, expanding our knowledge, and discovering our passions have prepared us for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. We have laughed together, studied together, had fun together, and today we'll celebrate and cry together. Apparently starting now. Class of 2024, it is with great honor that as your class president, I can stand here today to congratulate you, celebrate you, and to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making these past four years truly unforgettable. Congratulations to the class of 2024, we did it. Thank you, Michaela. It is my distinct honor to welcome this year's commencement speaker, Dr. Ansel Augustine. Dr. Augustine is an award-winning author and speaker. He serves the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops as the Assistant Director of African American Affairs of the Secretariat of Cultural Diversity in the Church. He is also a member of St. Michael's College Board of Trustees and serves on the faculty of two higher education institutions, Xavier and Loyola Universities. This past February, our college's Edmundite Center for Peace and Justice welcomed Dr. Augustine to campus to give a talk titled Radically Black and Authentically Catholic, A Journey of Faith. He began his career in ministry more than 20 years ago today when he became the youth minister at his home parish of St. Peter Claver in the Treme area of New Orleans, which he later helped rebuild after Hurricane Katrina. St. Peter Claver Catholic Church was run by the Society of St. Ed Edmunds, our own society, for 30 years. Throughout his career, Dr. Augustine has focused his ministry on youth, young adults, and multicultural groups, with social justice advocacy at the core of his work. He has also worked to shed light on the black Catholic experience through workshops and presentations throughout the country, through his writing, and as the film produ producer of Black Faith Matters, for which he is nominated for an, an, an Emmy Award. He is also the author of several books. He has played many vital roles. Most recently, Dr. Augustine served as the director of the Office of Black Catholic Ministries for the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Additionally, he has worked in prison ministry for more than 25 years and volunteers extensively and is a member of many fraternal and community organizations. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ansel Augustine back to St. Michael's College. Well, good morning. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope, I ain't come all the way up here to this frozen tundra to receive that cold uh, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. All right, family. St. Michael's College, make some noise.
2024 graduates, this is a celebration for you all. And I just want you to understand who is here in this space and place for you right now. So all the parents or parental figures make some noise. All right, all right. Family and friends make some noise. Faculty, staff, board of trustees make some noise. And finally, the most important people that are here. Class of 2024 make some noise. So it's an honor and pleasure to be here. I have been told to be brief because I am standing in between you, the conferral of your degrees, lunch, and the party, all right? I ain't here to stop anybody on that, all right? But I just want you to understand, before I go into this, I want to thank two people in particular. Uh, Ms. Linda Murphy, who's taken care of me even before I was uh, getting here and getting all my logistics together, and your new president, Richard Plum. Please give them a round of applause, please. And I know we recognize the moms that are here several times, uh, but I'd like to tell you a quick story about my mother, one of my church mothers. So I was raised by the Edmundites uh, and also the Sisters of the Holy Family, uh, the Order of Black Nuns in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. And the Superior General of that time period, God rest her soul, Sister Eva Regina Martin, uh, was one of my moms. It's because of her and Father Michael Jacques, who was an Edmundite, uh, that I got my start in ministry. Well, Sister Eva Regina used to always come up to me and say, Ansel, I'm like, yeah, sister. She's like, I am praying that you become a priest. And I will respond, sister, I'm praying that you pray another prayer. <laughs> but either way, my connection to St. Michael's College through the Edmundites, through the students that we sent up here from New Orleans, in all those spaces and places, these Edmundites and these sisters saw something greater in me than I saw in myself. And it's the same here with each and every one of you all that have matriculated through this university. And being raised by the Edmundites, Father Michael used to have this one saying, which will be my theme for today. And it's simply this. It's not about you, but about what God does through you. So repeat after me, family. It's not about you. I told you, y'all brought me up to this frozen tundra. Y'all going to participate. It's not about you. All right, one more time for the Holy Ghost. It's not about you. It's not about you. And I want to share with the uh, students that are here this little piece of uh, wisdom. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of David and Goliath. And many of you have heard it about this young boy that goes and defeats this giant with the slingshot. Everybody was talking negative to him, like, you can't do it, you can't do it. And he didn't listen to them, he listened to his faith. And so in this moment, I want you to understand this. When David faced Goliath, he didn't talk about how dangerous Goliath was. He talked about how great God is. I'm going to share that again. David didn't focus on how dangerous Goliath was, but he focused on how great God is. At this school, this Catholic school, we need to understand, as the president said, who we are, but more importantly, whose we are. Young people, as you go out into the world, there will be dangers, there will be snares, there will be challenges, and there will be doubts. But I want you to understand the same God that got you to this point is the same God that's going to get you to your goal. Understand that. You will doubt certain things. You will understand that there will be times that you will see, did I make the right choice? Is this where I need to be? Am I in the right program, is the military for me, wherever you are going, whether you're even wondering what is the next step even after today. Understand this, the role of the world and the evil one is to make you doubt yourself. But you have to remember that you are someone of importance and someone of value and someone of worth. If God took time to make you, you have a purpose. Remember, it's not about you. So you have an assignment on this earth, something that is unique solely to you. You are not an accident. You are not an incident. God crafted you for a unique purpose to make something of yourself and to make a difference of this world in this world, to make the world a better place. That's what it's about. But just like David used his own God-given weapon that day, a slingshot, 
Your time at St. Michael's College is a time to hone and sharpen your weapon to fight the ills of this world. So your goal is, is as you go through life, is to find your slingshot. He could have used the sword, but he knew his weapon was a slingshot. He could have used whatever was there, the armor that was there, but he used the slingshot. In this space and place, family, I need you to understand this, especially our students, but this goes to everybody that's here. David didn't use other people's tools. He used what God gave him, the same for you. You will be put in places, or are in places, in spaces where God wants to use you. You may feel uncomfortable, you may feel like you don't belong, but if God put you there, he has an assignment for you there. Remember, you are allowed to both be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. So stop comparing, stop comparing. Be the best you that you are called to be. If your money is looking funny, have faith. If your family and friends may have heard or betrayed you, have faith. If your emotions are running wild and you don't know what's next, have faith. If you're having health concerns, family, have faith. If you are unsure about the future, remember this. As I said before, God will never bring you to a place where he would leave you. Have faith. Today, I close by saying this. Who would have thought a brother from the Sixth Ward in New Orleans, St. Peter Claver Church, would be giving a keynote commencement address at a college or university? Who would have thought that same person would be working for the USCCB? And in these transitions I've had the last five weeks of moving from New Orleans to Washington, D.C., another frozen tundra, <laughs> is to remember God is in, yeah, it's cold over there too. God is in control. God is ready to do what he wants to do through us. But remember this, family. It's not about you, but what God has done through you, is doing through you, and will do through you. Congratulations, class of 2024. Go out in the world and shine your light. I love you. Peace and God bless. Thank you, Dr. Augustine. I'm glad I don't have to top that. We will now begin the conferral of degrees. Will the master's candidates please begin to come forward? Please be sure to bring your name card with you. The master's candidates have been recommended for graduation from our programs in clinical psychology, education, and teaching English to speakers of other languages. Heidi St. Peter, Director of Purposeful Learning, and Dr. Timothy Mackin, Associate Dean of the College, will present the candidates for master's and bachelor's degrees for the class of 2024. The bachelor's degrees will be presented alphabetically as a single group. For a few of our students, a family member with an association to the college will participate in the awarding of the diploma. For undergraduate students, we'll also be announcing the awarding of departmental and program honors given to the highest achieving students in that field of study. We ask that guests please do not leave your seats for picture taking during the handing of diplomas. We'll begin by presenting the candidates for master's degrees. After the master's degrees are conferred, we'll continue with the bachelor's degrees. Afnan Ellis. <laughs> Caleb Conlon. <laughs> Allison DiBianca Fasoli. <laughs> Kanika Krista Gandhi. Rhea Ann Gomes. Danielle Jean Kangas.
Brian Robert McCarthy. Colin Michael O'Connor. Samantha Susan Rice. James Patrick Baker. Claire M. Barnard. Victoria Susan Bossy. Charlotte Irene Broom. Henry Markham Haddad. Megan Ann Holland. Jonas Kambiri. Jared Liga. Rebecca Ann London. Jackie Patrizio. Isabella Hope Sirocco. Kate Anna Spear. Emma Jane Taliaferro. Haley Renee Vance. Jordan Viennes. Amdamela Kwarsam Hashi. Francois Malopo Keita. Eliza May Prescott. Christine Willa Newberg. Asa Christopher Benjamin Whalen. <laughs> Master degree candidates, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, and by the authority of the state of Vermont, I hereby confer upon you these master's degrees with all the rights, responsibilities, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Alexander George Abdel. Anna Margaret Aiken. Omar A. Allers Rivera. 
Nico Allard Kraus. Jessica Anderson. Theodore Joseph Andres. Benoit Pierre Archambault. Receiving departmental honors in public health, Paisley Grace Atwood. Receiving departmental honors in philosophy and ethics, Kiana Marie Ayer. Receiving departmental honors in biology, Petra Maria Bayuk. <laughs> Jordan Elizabeth Baker. Liam F. Barrett. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Bassett. <laughs> Nishan Benaya Battle. <laughs> Timothy A. Beaver, Jr. <laughs> Dimaggio Marie Bellino. Haley Marie Benton. Lauren Rachel Best. Skyly Hope Bickings. Madeline Ann Biondi. Michaela M. Blake. Macy Jordan Bolart. Brandon Neil Boris. Receiving departmental honors in chemistry, Aaron Alexander Bouchard. Shane Patrick Boyd. Sarah E. Boyden. Paige Donovan Brooks. Maximilian Gager Bruner. Declan Timothy Buckley. Jamie Hannah Buffington. Eliza M. Byrne. Julia Mary Collini. Lily Summer Callow. Michael Paul Camerata, Jr. Caitlin Elizabeth Canavan. Charlie Catherine Cancroft. Peter Joseph Canning. Peter Anthony Capadolupo. Carissa Lee Casey. Lydia May Charbonneau. Sirufu Shen. Tanya Arania Chavez. Bridget Jean Cristiano. Lydia Elise Clapp. 
Receiving Departmental Honors in Secondary Education, William Forrest Coburn. Daniel James Colbert. Abigail Rose Cole. Sean Christopher Conley. Megan Elizabeth Connor. Jack Henry Conroy. Hannah Jamie Constant. Addison Pearl Catherine Cook. Ainsley Faith Cook. Mia Kate Cooper. Matthew William Constantino. Lelena Rose Costanzo. Olivia Emma Couillard. Garrett William Knoyer. Riley Mae Craig. Elizabeth Jeanette Crabby. Receiving Departmental Honors in Elementary Education, Katherine Grace Culleton. Danielle Louise Cummings. Tess Louise Curran. Samuel Ethan Curtis. Rachel Jade Davey. Alex Ryan Danyo. Alexander Charles Dalton. Jaden Allen Darling. Receiving Departmental Honors in Accounting, Alexis Elizabeth DeBlois. Receiving Departmental Honors in English, Christopher Hans De Negre. Bailey Edward Des Roberts. Ella Grace Devlin De Bernardo. Callis Michael Dean. Sheridan Nicole DeLeo. Maria Marina Elizabeth Donati. Kayla Britt Dow. Amanda Mary Drislane. Charles Henry Jolette. Kristen Duplisi. Reagan Lee Dufrank. Du Jared James Duquette. Celia Renee Durgan. Braden Clifford Duenel. Justin Thomas Duenel. Tyler Richard Engborn, receiving departmental honors in informational systems. Bennington Arthur Erickson. Jenna Lynn Farber. Natasha Ann Farrar. Michaela Ann Fernald. Henry Ferrari.
uh, Elise Kathleen Ferreira. Felicia Rose Phil. Lillian Grace Flathers. Lillian Mary Fleming. Caitlin Elise Folsom. Trenton Bartley Fontana. Sophia R. Fournier. Rocky Gonya. Gabriel Gagnon. Taylor Madison Galgay. Receiving departmental honors in mathematics, Camille Kathleen Gallagher. Megan Eileen Gallo. Andrew Craig Galvin. Justin Adilio Garcia. Mia Elizabeth Gardner. Rachel Ann Gavin. Aiden John Gay Colleen. Thomas Gordon Gillis. Robert Thomas Grady. Receiving Departmental Honors in Religious Studies, Addison Joan Granger. William Fitzhugh Granger. Rocco Grion. Caroline Grace Gust. Blair Roderick Harris. Ian Robert Harris. Receiving de departmental honors in criminology, Maya Alicia Heron. Jenna Elizabeth Hitchin. Emily Susan Hoffman. Patrick Allen Hogan. Elise Mary Hallway. Emily Howe. Bruce Y. Hubert. James P. Hunt. Mariah Jane Hunt. Receiving departmental honors in public health, Gregory William Herder. Cameron Jesse Isherwood. Anne Marie Janelle. John Lee Jenkins. Receiving departmental honors in statistics, Swapnil Jajaria. Angelica Marie Johns. Ryan Van Johnson. Receiving departmental honors in health science, Trevor Lawrence Johnson. Chloe Ann Johnston. Receiving departmental honors in business administration, Valerie Ann Johnston. Alexa Jovanovich. Annika Rose Capril. Logan Thomas Keelty. Emma Ann Kelly. Macarena Kelly Zambrano. Gabriel Escher Kelsey. 
Receiving departmental honors in psychology and sociology and anthropology, Virginia Rice Kelsey. Luke Gerald Kenny. Elsa Isadora Keppel Lonegren. Abigail Mary Kittler. Taylor Marie Knight. Mary Alice Cohn. Presenting the next degree is the graduate sister, Patty Cohn, assistant athletic strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Kachufis. Katie Kaziatek. <laughs> Maxwell Clifford Kramer. <laughs> Kelly Diantha Lagas. <laughs> Colby Roland Ronald Lamarch. Audrey Lamorder. Michaela Michelle Langbecker. Andrew R. Lanthier. Receiving departmental honors in French, Madison LeCare. Alexander Ronald Leandri. Daisy Guzardi Lees. Sarah Rebecca Janet Leinbach. Morgan Daly Leonard. Mary Grace Lees. Taylor Noel Livingston. Receiving departmental honors in digital media and communications, Anissa Jo Logan. Mary Bridget Laughlin. Frank David Loveland. Tegan Rose Lowe. Michael Francis Lynch. Daniel Edward Lynn IV. Aaron Brendan Madden. Bennett Stahl Mallinson. Molly Hayes Manley. Rosemary Ann Marr. Sterling Fisher Martin. Rachel Lynn McAdams. Jake William McCardle. Tegan McCaffrey. Receiving departmental honors in political science, Finn James Keating McGilvery. John James McGinnis. Miranda McGuire Eggleston. Bria Nicole McKenney. Emily Giroux McLean. Erica Lynn Mead. Sophia Memaris. Receiving departmental honors in neuroscience, Noel Virginia Messick. Cameron Antonio Michael. Dana Michelle Adriana Mieles. Javier Navakes Sendra. Mitchell Scott Moffat. 
Benjamin Graham Morganson. Scott Wesley Morell Jr. Dylan Christian Morgan. Aaron Moxie. Hope Kadrin Masumba. Catherine Murphy. James Joseph Murphy. Marshall Dale Murphy. Madison Marie Musselman. Jackson Shea Nato. Receiving Departmental Honors in Environmental Science, Sarah Michelle Newton. Receiving Departmental Honors in Computer Science, Max Gary Noddings. Receiving Departmental Honors in Gender and Sexuality Studies, Campbell Nutting. Lily Mae O'Connell, presenting the next degree is the graduate's father, Ken O'Connell, Director of Military Community Enrollment and Resources. Caitlin Mae O'Connor. Aiden Cornelius O'Donovan. Samuel Mark Offenbach. Shane Brian Olin. Chuma Charles Oyigbo. James William Pacheco. Samantha Marie yes, Page. Yes. Grace Elizabeth Palmer. Andrea Isabella Paredes Mendoza. Ethan George Pasco. Anna Grace Padreski. Sierra Mary Pepin. Jacob Andrew Perkins. Allison Blake Petrozo. Lucas Matthew Petruzello. Willow Heather Quindley. Roma Reed. Thomas Renahan. Arthur Graham Resch. Darby Jean Rich. Juno James Veron Rich. Kennedy Lynn Richard. Kevin Andrew Riggs. Receiving departmental honors in data science and in economics. Nikolai Ribber. Nathan Edward Rogers. Griffin Francis Rossi. Mackenzie Alyssa Balbotham. Elliot Thomas Ryan. Lily Alona Sable. Jackson Lee Sargent. Grace Catherine Saunders. Jocelyn Isabel Savard. Spencer N. Scardino. 
Willow Madison Schaefer. Charles Forsyth Schamp. Antonino Paolo Scolieri. Nicholas Line Selvag. Matthew James Savigny. Samantha Lynn Shapiro. Lachlan Timothy Sheridan. Casey Davis Sibilia. Lauren Olivia Silieka. Matthew Frank Simboski. Robert A. Cinebaldi. Receiving Departmental Honors in Art and Design, Magnolia Grace Sinisi. Chaz Michael Steeles. Lindsay Marie Skinner. Paige Isabella Slavin. Sophia Ruth Strauss. Olivia Stebbins. Nika Adair Steiner. Cameron W. Stewart. Summer Grace Stoddard. Simon Oiseth Strand. Samantha Jean Sullivan. Talia Eleanor Tantillo. Noah James Terracina. Zachary Charles Taylor. Sophia Martina Tedesco. Dakota Ari Thomas. Shizhen Tian. Lena Rosario Torres. Lauren Nicole Twig. Samuel August Vanderwall. Sophia Despina Venetos. Olivia May Pauline Verret. Jenna Lee Walker. Courtney Elizabeth Walsh. Courtney Vance Watt. Marley Mackenzie Welter. Addison Lee Wessinger. Caitlin Winifred Wick. Claire Alyssa Williams. Receiving Departmental Honors in Art Education, Drew Grace Williams. Natalie Ann Williams. Declan Joseph Wolchowski. Nathan Nathaniel Gordon Woods. Kuwar Sham. Jace James Zapata.
Can I have all the baccalaureate candidates please rise? By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees and by the authority of the State of Vermont, I hereby confer upon you the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree which you have successfully earned with all the rights, responsibilities, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. It is my pleasure to introduce the president of the St. Michael's Alumni Association Board of Directors, Patrick Fitzgibbon, from the class of 1989. They send up the guy who works at a bank to follow Dr. Alexander. It's not very good. <laughs> good morning, President Plum, members of the Edmundite family, trustee board members, faculty and staff, and most importantly, members of the class of 2024 and your families. My name is Pat Fitzgibbons, proud member of the great class of 1989 and president of St. Michael's Alumni Board. It's my honor today to represent the board and welcome you all to our ranks of more than 23,000 alumni of St. Michael's College. As I look out among the crowd, I can't help remembering my own graduation when the speaker told us something for 57 minutes <laughs> on a very hot Mother's Day. Members of my family still have not spoken to me. So I promised uh, those who have forgiven me and all of you that I'll be brief. First of all, it's an honor to be with you. You've all achieved so much, so many great things in these past four years, and graduation's a perfect time to take a moment and remember how far you've all come. And while some of the memories from college, both good and bad, will fade over time, look around at the faces of your classmates. These relationships that you have made in your time here at St. Mike's are what keeps the alumni board members coming back to campus and interacting with you all. My role here today and my reason for being on the alumni board and staying associated with this wonderful community is to tell you two things. First, relax and breathe. Strive to enjoy every moment of your journey and don't sweat the destination too much. Second, you aren't alone. All of us who are members of the alumni community of St. Mike's have made a lifelong commitment to you and to your classmates. After today, you're now part of our alumni family, with chapters meeting all the time all around the world. Because you're graduating does not end our shared relationship. All of us on the alumni board have committed to being a resource for you on good days and on bad. So look us up. Make us part of your people. Take a stroll through whatever social media platform you like and find us. We're here to help. I encourage all of you to look for alumni events in your communities and join us in helping the next generation of St. Mike's students find careers, events, and opportunities that will fulfill their dreams. When I finally got my first dream job after graduation, it was through a connection with a fellow alum. He walked me through the process, coached me for the interviews, and gave me the confidence that I can do it. Helping members of the St. Mike's community get over their most recent hurdles is our goal. The great baseball philosopher Satchel Paige smartly said that in times of stress and uncertainty, to don't look back, something might be gaining on you. 
Let us help all of you look ahead with optimism and enthusiasm for all the great things coming for you. We're here to support you, encourage you, support your successes, make your happy days sweeter, and make your occasional days of sadness less burdensome. And remember this as you pack up and head on your way. We alumni are so proud of you. And we look forward to helping the rest of your journey be just as meaningful as these past four years have been. God bless you all today and every day. And thank you for letting me be part of your special day. As our ceremony draws to a close, I want to take a moment to thank all of those individuals and offices who have worked hard to make today's celebration run so smoothly. I just wish I could name you all by name, but it's a, a large army. Particularly those in the President's Office, Academic Affairs, Public Safety, Facilities, Special Events, Student Affairs, Sodexo, and the Registrar's Office. In addition, our pride in the accomplishment of our graduates is enhanced by the knowledge that over the past four years, the committed faculty and staff of St. Michael's College have interacted with our students in transformational ways. I ask all of the faculty and staff who are here today to stand as they are able so that we may acknowledge and thank them for dedicating themselves to student learning at St. Michael's College. It is my honor to introduce Reverend David Thru, Society of St. Edmunds, to give the benediction. He is celebrating his retirement this year after his many contributions to schools and parishes from Mystic, Connecticut, to Whitton, England, to New Orleans, to our very own St. Michael's College classrooms. We are deeply grateful that he will remain an engaged member of our community. During his time in a Nazi concentration camp, Viktor Frankl found meaning in even the direst of circumstances by remembering the one he loved, his most loved wife. He chose to survive in those dark days of his life, responding to what others had done to him by the choice to live according to what he wanted for himself not what others wanted for him. Frankel reminds us, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. This is one thing that I did learn as a student here at St. Michael's College many years ago, and it's remained with me all my life. And so we bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, indeed God of our future, you know already the path we will take and the outcome of our lives. In your knowledge of the world lies already what is yet to be for us. Yet it is ours to choose, to scheme, to plan, to propose, to conclude, we pray this day for those who now complete their time at St. Michael's and who commence to write a new story for themselves in their departure from this place. Help them to make good decisions and to judge wisely the way they choose. They will all too soon realize that plans change and there is no straight path. Indeed, it is said of you, that when we propose, you are the one to dispose. Life teaches us all too often, Lord, that our choices are more about what to do with the hand we have been dealt than to choose what hand we will play.
We pray that when our students here are uncertain, remind them what is sure. When they are lonely, be their companion. When they are loved, help them to love even more. And when they find themselves lost, show them the way. Indeed, you have told us that Jesus, your son, is the way, that faithful companion who already has made life's journey and with whom we find safe harbor in you because he knows the way. This we pray in your name, in the name of your son and in the name of the spirit whom you give us this day and all days to guide our pilgrim way. We say amen. As our ceremony ends, I ask the students with 4-0 GPAs to come to the bottom of the front stairs to prepare to lead the recession along with President Plum. We invite all in attendance to a reception immediately following our recessional. Light refreshments will be available in the Diane Student and Family Center, and members of the faculty will be on all three floors. Please check the signs to find your department or program so that graduates can introduce family members to their faculty. Please take a few minutes to enjoy this wonderful celebration with those who've been part of your St. Michael's experience. As you exit the building today, we ask you to proceed all the way to the green so that others behind you in the building may exit. Please stay seated until the graduates have recessed. The 117th commencement exercises of St. Michael's College are now dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>